we're going to talk about uh, Job. That's kind of where I'm at um, in in my studies, and so it's relevant, and I can, uh, you know, it's fresh in my mind for the last last couple of weeks. Uh, we all um, know folks who have suffered, and we can't make sense of it. You know, the world's full of full of hurt, and uh, We want to, or I want to uh, think of God as this kind God who fixes things and, and makes it hard to um, understand why there is so much suffering out there. So I think um, Job gives us an insight into um, some of the ways that struggles are uh, for God's glory. Um, and as we go along in here, we'll learn that some of these sufferings aren't just a Result of um, personal sin, you know, because I, I usually get tripped up on that. It's like, okay, what's going on here? I, you know, maybe I've done something that's led to this and such things. So, I'm going to uh, start off. We'll read the uh, beginning of Job here. Um, in the land of Uz or Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels. 500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys, and had a num large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, Perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And this was Job's regular custom. So this is the introduction. Um, he's obviously a righteous man. The Bible calls him out and says he's blameless and the greatest man among the living in the East. So, um, you know, it's not a person you would think would be set up for a bunch of suffering. Does anybody want to add to this at all? Anybody have any experience with this? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. Okay. Uh, so I'm continue on. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing, Satan replied? Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands so that, the flock, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. One day, when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby. And the Sabians attacked and made off with them. They put the ser servants to the sword. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants. And I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them. They put the servants to the sword, and I am the only one who has escaped you. While he was still speaking, yet another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. When suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house, it clasped on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my womb, mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the, may the name of the Lord be praised. 
In all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Oh, that's, a, that's a pile. That's a pile of stuff he just went through. <laughs> uh, and, you know, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking, you know, one of the things that pumped out was just how bold Satan is. Just yeah. that it's like he, he's claiming, how do you say, um, equality with God as he's talking to him, it's just a, it's an arrogance that I don't know, just, just stuck out to me as I was, I was reading this. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any thoughts on what we, what we just read? Well, one thing I've always thought about is um, I've always thought about Job on all these past two years that if he could serve God under all those circumstances coming against him, yeah. then I could survive. <laughs> you know, the circumstances, because they would just usually come one or two at a time, right. not everything, you know. And so I just always look back at it, and I just always thought it was a great example to mm -hmm. us of what a great man of God he was, mm -hmm. that he could he could go through all that and still say that. And not question. And not question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it is encouraging, because... Like you said, when, when we get hit with stuff, for me, it seems, it's, it's not a pile. Right. You know, I mean, it's significant. I mean, it hurts, but, right. you know, it's not all your property's gone, all your kids are killed. All, you know, I mean, everything you know is just ripped away from you. I mean, right. you know, so, yeah, the way he conducts himself is, a, is an encouragement, is a, is a testimony. Anyone else? I think it shows me that if, I mean, he was just a human being, so mm -hmm. if he had that kind of strength, then we can have that kind of strength. Right. Amen. Yeah. Through, yeah. through things. Right. Because he was. That's a good point. Yeah. He was just a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll continue on with, uh, with Job. Um, on another day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Saul, Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil, and he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied, a man who will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the, sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? So this is the second way that Job had to deal with, and this is personal. It's affecting his personal body. So even in, in the face of his wife, um, you know, just not encouraging him, he chose not to um, curse God. Um, anyone else? Anyone have any comments? I, re I remember a lot of times people would really get after his wife, yeah. you know, and say, wow, you know, she didn't encourage him at all. She, And I thought, what if you just lost all your kids? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? The circumstances are awful. Stuff, but if any right. of us were in that situation as a woman, right. would we have encouraged our husband? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's a big thing. Sure. Especially for a mama, you know, to lose all her children yeah. and not fall under that. You know, she was, she again was flesh, you yeah. know, and so she was just. It would be off. easy to say, she, from her perspective, that he's just crazy. He's, right. he's putting up with all of this. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she may have been just as godly as a person. Right. But, you know, everything just got to her money, you know, her financial, any security. Yes, yeah, security, all of right. Was gone. Right. And in the moment, would we have not done the same thing? Yeah. And I've just thought how they just get on to her so bad sometimes in sermons. Okay. And, and yet here she is, just a fleshly woman, and would not we have done the same thing? Yeah. Maybe if we had more time. Yeah. You know, we and we recovered. 
we've probably done it already. Right. Yeah. Under yeah. less circumstances, men and women have mm -hmm. probably done it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're angry with God. Right. And then he forgives us, so we mm -hmm. realize. We, hopefully we learn from it. Right. Get right. closer to him. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure she recovered from it all. Right. You know, <laughs> it takes time. Yeah. You know, with the Lord to recover. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, this this the opening to Job, and it's, um, you know, when we, as it goes from here, it'd be, it's going to be his, his friends show up and they talk about, um, you know, trying to encourage him and trying to figure out what, what the heck's going on and such. I, I didn't get into that here because, frankly, I felt this was going to be a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, if anyone else has any other comments in here? The only other thing I was going to say is I had never, I don't know, just never got it where Satan attacks him all those other ways. And then he comes back to God. And like yeah. that wasn't enough. Right. So Job didn't cave right. for the first part. So Satan comes as an accuser again. Yeah, and not even acknowledging. Not even acknowledging. All of the stuff he said beforehand wasn't true. Yeah. Because Job obviously didn't turn on him. Right. The first go around. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So he comes back for another major attack. And God lets him. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, it's just not enough for him. Right. You know. That's right. Yeah. Like the accuser is just the accuser. Mm -hmm. and He's a liar and a thief. Right. And he wants to kill us. And it's not even, you know what, and it just dawned on me, it's not even the act of the, um, or dealing with the situation right there. It's just, it's a never ending thing. He's not even going to acknowledge that he was wrong about the first batch. He's just going right. to throw another thing out there to keep it going. Right. You know, and it, you're right. The accuser just it never never rests. So never. We, if we stop and think about that, how horrible this man is, this, this mm. person is yeah. against us, how much he hates us. Right. Right? He hates God so vehemently, so he hates us mm -hmm. this bad that he will just keep, he will just keep coming. Mm. You know, he's going to, I mean, as a human being, I would never wish that on another human being, yeah. right? But he does. Yeah. He does wish to harm us that mm -hmm. way, that he would come against us. So, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, in conclusion, without knowing all of God's plan, we can't understand all, understand all the suffering that happens. Um, but. You know, one way that can be used as a way to bring us closer to God to rely more on Him because we don't understand His mysteries. Anything else, anyone? I was trying to think of that scripture where the Lord said to Paul, I think it was, uh, you know, basically my, my strength, or, you know, that I go through out His weakness, my, you know, my uh, weakness is His made perfect in His mm -hmm. strength. And I thought, um, Satan's never going to let up. Right. So the day you die. Yeah. <laughs> and didn't you say, Leah, that like with Job, though, like in the Old Testament, that just, that's not what God would, or some of God, it's not what he would do today. Yeah. No. We're in the age of grace. Yeah. Yeah. And he, that's just, that wasn't God's idea anyway.
and I got on an antibiotic um, earlier than I was supposed to because they didn't know what it was and, and then they said, well, you know, we'll give you an antibiotic and um, they probably won't be ready till the next day. So Jeff went to Walmart to get me Gatorade and he wasn't even gonna check at the pharmacy because he didn't think it was gonna be ready. Yeah. And the pharmacist recognized him and called him out. Hmm. And, and called him and said, you got a prescription ready. So I had started it that night instead of three o'clock the next day mm -hmm. or at least the next morning. And uh, so God let me go through that. You know, he let me go to yeah. use the antibiotic. He, but I found comfort that he mm -hmm. knew what I had. And mm -hmm. He got me the antibiotic early. And um, and that was the form of healing that he used. But and he was kind enough to to give a word to Jeff yes. to get to encourage yes. you. Yeah. And so even though he didn't like flat out heal me, he let me use the antibiotic and all that, which I literally went from death to life uh, with just that one dose, that first wow. dose of antibiotic. I'm not kidding. Okay. And uh, and so I found great comfort in that. The, well, Lord, you do, you know, you do see and you do know, and, and but this is the route you're going to take, mm -hmm. you know, this is the, the antibiotic, you know, you're going to let me go this route. And that's okay. Yeah. You know? Right. So he sees and he knows and, and, and his, our weakness is his strength made known. Yeah. Amen. You know, and I'll just second that. That's what, you know, I shared with Leah that happened to me when I went to the hospital for things. And I questioned the Lord, you know, what is this for? Yeah. But yet, in every little turn, he just showed favor to me, you know, in ways that just didn't make sense, okay. you know, like other people did, you know, he just as a way that he would just take care of little things yeah. that meant a lot to me mm -hmm. and that helped me get through it. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't keep it from happening. And the only thing I was going to say, I've been watching, you know, that series, The Chosen. Mm -hmm. And in there, Jesus tells um, Nicodemus and he tells another lady whose husband was crippled and um, had had a bad accident. He said, um, she, she's asking him, and Nicodemus says, well, aren't you coming back to set up your kingdom now? And, you know, and now all this will be taken care of, and we won't suffer. And, and he says to both of them, he just looks very compassionately at them, and he said, I didn't come for that. I did. There will still be broken bones. There will still be broken homes. There will still be suffering. But when God comes back to set up his kingdom, that I came so that you could have life and you can have that choice to go to heaven, like to take care of your sin, is what he was basically saying. Okay. I came to die for that, but the suffering, because you're still on earth and it's a fallen world, mm -hmm. is still going to happen until God comes, till my Father comes and sets up his kingdom. Okay. But everybody thought that Jesus was coming to set yeah. up the kingdom. And so I think that really helped me. You know that there's still the suffering here because we have an enemy mm -hmm. and we're still flesh and it's still a fallen world right. and he's the god of this world satan is yeah. and so there still is going to be suffering because he wants us to suffer mm -hmm. you know he and so um i don't know that just really helped me to to see the difference and you know sometimes i think we um i know i have we get the feeling that we want God to rescue us from yeah. every little thing like yeah. be witch, like twitch your nose and make right. everything right. good Right, and that's not what he came, Jesus mm -hmm. came to do. God will come and do that mm -hmm. when he takes us home and we're in new bodies and you know all that. But um, then we'll be rescued from the fallen world. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we still are living in it. So. Well, thank you for reading along with me. Um, appreciate the, the opportunity to come up here and just get a little bit better at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process, um, but uh, thank you all for the patience. And uh, I guess we'll see you on upstairs. Okay. Thank you for sharing.